The Cold War was about to heat up, and the B-58 Hustler was ready to revolutionize air combat. This wasn't just any bomber, it was an aircraft that would break barriers, literally. Equipped with supersonic ejection pods, it could fly faster than any enemy aircraft, unleashing nuclear destruction with its five warheads. It carried more nuclear missiles than any bomber that came before it and could strike with deadly precision, making carpet bombing a relic of the past. But despite all its groundbreaking features, the B-58 only served for 10 short years. The future evolutions of this plane, spy versions, commercial passenger adaptations, never saw the light of day. This is the story of a bomber that was ahead of its time, designed for a nuclear war that never happened. This is the B-58 Hustler, The B-58 Hustler's design was a marvel in aviation engineering. It looked unlike anything that had come before, with its sleek, coke-bottle-shaped fuselage that took full advantage of the area rule principle, allowing it to fly at speeds that left both Soviet and European aircraft in its wake. The B-58's high-speed performance also relied on its Pratt and Whitney J-79 engines, which were capable of producing 15,600 pounds of thrust each, helping the Hustler reach and sustain Mark II speeds. The aerodynamic innovations introduced in the Hustler influenced future aircraft design, especially in terms of high-speed flight efficiency. The B-58 carried five nuclear warheads, more than any other bomber before it. With these weapons, the Hustler could devastate an entire enemy landscape and disappear long before anyone could retaliate. Additionally, the Hustler featured an advanced radar and electronic countermeasures system allowing it to detect and evade enemy defenses. These technologies significantly reduced the aircraft's vulnerability to anti-aircraft missiles, which were rapidly advancing at the time. The combination of offensive firepower and defense capabilities positioned the B-58 as a formidable component in the US strategic bomber fleet, ready for any nuclear scenario. The origins of the B-58 go back to the end of World War II, where the seeds of its development were planted in Nazi aircraft research. The Nazis had been experimenting with delta-wing designs, and though they didn't see their plans come to fruition, American engineers quickly picked up where they left off. Nazi research into swept-wing technology and high-speed flight dynamics informed the Convair engineers' work, particularly their application of supersonic design principles. The delta-wing configuration, combined with advancements in engine technology, allowed the B-58 to surpass earlier speed records and solidified the importance of this research in post-war aviation innovation. The B-58 didn't emerge overnight. Convair's engineers went through thousands of configurations before settling on a design. Early concepts like the GEB-02 and MX-1626 featured massive fuel pods and parasite designs that relied on larger aircraft to carry the bomber to its target. As technology advanced, so did the B-58's capabilities, including improvements in avionics and the development of new lightweight materials, which enabled the Hustler to carry heavier payloads without compromising speed. This evolution of design led to the creation of an aircraft that was not only faster, but more versatile than anything seen before. One of the key breakthroughs that made the B-58 viable was the advent of air-to-air -air refueling. This allowed the Hustler to operate without relying on other aircraft to carry it to battle zones. This capability, paired with new in-flight navigation systems, meant that the B-58 could adjust its missions mid-flight, expanding its strategic flexibility. The advent of aerial refueling also extended the operational reach of the B-58, enabling it to cover global distances without compromising its payload capacity or needing to land for refueling, a critical factor in Cold War nuclear deterrence strategy. By the time Convair finalized the design, the B-58 had evolved into a powerful, sleek supersonic bomber with four engines slung under the wings. The engineers made a radical shift to hydrogen bombs and the radar and weapon targeting systems were integrated back into the aircraft. The Hustler was also equipped with specialized ejection capsules for its crew, designed to operate at supersonic speeds and high altitudes. This unique feature provided an extra layer of safety ensuring that crew members had a higher chance of survival even if the aircraft faced catastrophic failure during high-speed flight. Convair managed to get the B-58 prototype in the air 
By August of 1956, and by the end of that year, the aircraft had already gone supersonic. However, despite its impressive performance, the jet faced criticism from military leaders. General Curtis LeMay, head of Strategic Air Command, questioned the bomber's range, believing that speed alone wouldn't make it a viable long-term strategic weapon. Additionally, early flight tests revealed structural stress issues at high speeds, particularly in the wings, requiring continuous modifications. These early challenges foreshadowed the technical difficulties that would ultimately impact the aircraft's operational effectiveness. Though the B-58 proved its mettle in bombing competitions and was hailed for its technological achievements, its use in real combat was limited. It didn't see action in Vietnam as its primary mission, nuclear delivery, didn't fit the theater of war. Moreover, the Hustler's high operational costs, combined with the growing effectiveness of Soviet surface-to-air missile systems, made it increasingly vulnerable during high-altitude missions. This vulnerability, coupled with its specialized role as a nuclear bomber, meant that the B-58 never saw the widespread use of more adaptable bombers like the B-52. The B-58's Achilles heel was its cost and complexity. Out of the 116 B-58s built, 26 were lost due to accidents, with 36 crew members killed. The aircraft was expensive to maintain and its operating costs were astronomical compared to other bombers. Beyond the technical complexities, the B-58 required specialized support crews for maintenance as its advanced electronic systems were difficult to service. This significantly added to the costs and made the B-58 less favorable in long-term military planning. As more versatile bombers emerged, the B-58's operational drawbacks became more pronounced. Despite its short service life, the B-58 left a lasting legacy. It set 19 world speed records, including a coast-to-coast -coast round trip between New York and Los Angeles in just 4 hours and 41 minutes. In 1963, it completed the longest supersonic flight ever, flying 8,000 miles from Tokyo to London in 8 hours and 35 minutes. Beyond these records, the Hustler paved the way for future supersonic designs, influencing both military and civilian aircraft development. Its engineers and pilots gained invaluable experience in supersonic flight that contributed to the later success of the SR-71 and other advanced aircraft. The B-58 Hustler was an aircraft designed for a world that never materialized. Built for nuclear strikes that never happened, it was a technological marvel that served just 10 years. While its role was short-lived, the B-58 remains an iconic piece of Cold War history. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into aviation's most fascinating machines.